Hi, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Nicole Allen, and I will be moderating today's media availability held by Environment and Climate Change Canada and Health Canada with regards to the current severe hot weather conditions forecasted for Ontario, Quebec, and the Atlantic provinces this week. I would like to begin by acknowledging I'm coming to you today from unceded Algonquin territory. A few points before we begin. The presentation will first occur in English and be followed by a presentation in French. We will then move to a question period. Jennifer Smith, National Warning Preparedness Meteorologist, will be presenting in English and in French on behalf of Environment and Climate Change Canada. For the Health Canada portions of the presentation, Peter Berry, Senior Policy Analyst and Science Advisor, will be presenting in French or in English, and Eric Leving, Research Scientist, will be presenting in French. The briefing is for attribution and can be recorded. To be called upon, we ask that you make sure your name and your media outlets are clearly identified in your Zoom name. And in the interest of time, please keep it to one question and one follow-up. Bonjour, je m'appelle Nicole Allen et je serai la modératrice de la conférence de presse aujourd'hui organisée par Environnement et Changement Climatique Canada et Santé Canada concernant les conditions de chaleur extrêmes cette semaine en Ontario, au Québec et dans les provinces atlantiques. J'aimerais tout d'abord souligner que je me situe sur le territoire algonquin non cédé. Avant de commencer, j'aimerais soulever quelques points. La présentation sera d'abord en anglais, puis en français. Ensuite, nous passerons à la période de questions. Jennifer Smith, météorologue nationale de sensibilisation aux alertes à environnement et changement climatique Canada, fera une présentation en anglais et en français. Pour la présentation de Santé Canada, Peter Berry, analyste politique et conseiller scientifique, fera une présentation en anglais et Eric Laving, chercheur scientifique, fera une présentation en français. Il sera possible de citer les intervenants et le point de presse pourra être enregistré. Pour poser une question, nous vous demandons de vous assurer que votre nom et votre média soient clairement identifiés dans votre nom Zoom. Et enfin, veuillez vous limiter à une question et à une question de suivi. Je passe maintenant la parole à Jennifer et à Peter pour la présentation en anglais. Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jennifer Smith, and I am the National Warning Preparedness Meteorologist at Environment and Climate Change Canada. Today, I will be discussing the ongoing heat event in eastern Canada. Let's begin with the general weather scenario. Next slide, please. A ridge of high pressure centered over eastern North America is setting up a heat wave. This pronounced and slow moving ridge is a weather feature that traps warm air. It is the reason for the exceptionally hot and humid air mass, which began to affect Ontario on Monday, and it has since extended east across Quebec and out to Atlantic Canada. Widespread temperatures above 30 degrees and a humid X value over 40 have been observed already, and these conditions are expected to continue until the ridge weakens and moves away. So not only has it been hot, but it has been incredibly humid uh, or muggy, which makes it a lot harder to cool off. Further to that, the nighttime temperatures are remaining very warm. This exacerbates the heat event because there is limited relief at night. Again, people are not able to cool off for an extended period of time. In good news, though, the above normal temperatures are expected to ease on Friday, with the exception of extreme southern Ontario, where the above normal heat and humidity will linger until late Sunday. But until then, it will be a muggy, hot few days for eastern Canada. Let's take a look at the significance of this event and the impacts. Next slide, please. Such a heat wave has rarely been observed this early in June. It is up there with the worst of the July and August heat waves we've seen over the years. From a meteorological perspective, it is a significant ridge, but impact wise, that won't really be known until the event is over. The effect of heat on society is often cumulative. The temperature will be most abnormally high today and tomorrow, so Wednesday and Thursday, particularly over southeastern Ontario, southern Quebec, and western New Brunswick. Records may be broken. Uh, for example, the forecast today for Montreal is 34 degrees Celsius, and the all-time June record is 35 degrees Celsius, dating back to 1964. Furthermore, a stretch of three days with a maximum of 32 degrees before June 20th has only been observed twice since 
1875 in Montreal, uh, and that was in 1978 and in 1919. Meanwhile, in Toronto, the longest streak of above 40 humidex uh, was 10 days, and this was dating back to uh, late August, early September of 1953. Uh, so these are some records that we're monitoring to see uh, where we stand in relation to past events. Uh, some daily records were broken yesterday, uh, particularly for the highest max temperature, but most interestingly was for the, uh, the highest minimum temperature across Ontario and Quebec. Heat, uh, extreme heat can affect everyone's health. Uh, we need to take care of each other, especially our vulnerable populations. Uh, Environment and Climate Change Canada issues heat warnings that contain health messaging developed in collaboration with Health Canada. These warnings were issued leading up to this heat event and Environment and Climate Change Canada meteorologists continue to monitor the weather 24 seven and update these warnings as the situation evolves. Next slide, please. This is a humid heat wave. So the abundance of moisture makes the atmospheric environment conducive to thunderstorm development. Uh, additionally, here in Canada, we are on the northern fringe of that ridge of high pressure where thunderstorms often do form. So it is strongly recommended to monitor alerts and stay informed about the latest watches and warnings. Uh, just a reminder that a watch is issued when atmospheric conditions are favorable for the development of thunderstorms, while a warning means that severe weather is occurring and to take the appropriate actions. Next slide. So to access the latest weather information, watches, warnings, and advisories, um, I invite you to download the WeatherCan app. Visit us on our website at uh, weather. Uh, or sorry, Canada.ca slash weather. Follow us on social media, phone into Hello Weather, or tune in to Weather Radio. I will now pass the microphone to my colleagues at Health Canada to speak to the impacts of this heat event and their recommendations for staying safe. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks so much, Jen. Good morning. Good afternoon. My name is Peter Berry and I'm from Health Canada. So the current extreme heat event that is affecting many people in central and eastern Canada can pose serious risk to health. Extreme heat can affect anyone. However, older adults, infants and young children, and people with chronic illnesses are at greatest risk. This can include people with diabetes, those experiencing mental illness, or those with cardiovascular or lung disease. And people experiencing homelessness and people who work outdoors or exercise in the heat are also at greater risk during extreme heat events. So being prepared for hot weather, being able to identify the symptoms of heat stress and knowing what to do to cool down are critical steps all people in Canada should know to protect themselves and their loved ones. It's important to recognize the signs of heat illness, such as dizziness or fainting, nausea, headache, unusually rapid breathing, and heartbeat or extreme thirst. And if you have any of these symptoms during extreme heat, move to a cool place and drink liquids right away. And water is best for that. Heat illnesses are mainly caused by overexposure to extreme heat or overexertion. These illnesses can include heat exhaustion, heat fainting, heat edema, which is the swelling of hands, feet, and ankles, heat rash, and heat cramps. And heat illnesses can also lead to long-term health problems or even death. Now, there are three key things that people can do during an extreme heat event. Be informed, so keep up to date with local weather forecasts and alerts, and arrange for regular and frequent check-ins on your family members, neighbours, or friends in case they need help. Get hydrated and stay hydrated. Drink plenty of liquids, again, especially water, before you feel thirsty. And stay cool. The most effective ways to protect yourself from extreme heat while indoors are, in addition to staying hydrated, using air conditioning. Blocking the sun by closing awnings, curtains, or blinds during the day, using fans, taking cool showers or baths, making meals that don't need to be cooked in the oven, and spending time in a cool place like a community center or a library. And remember to never leave people in your car or pets inside a parked vehicle in summer because it can get dangerously hot very fast. We also need to remember that heat stroke is a medical emergency. So if you witness somebody with complete or partial loss of consciousness, somebody's confused and has a high body temperature or has stopped sweating, call 911 or your local emergency number immediately. And while waiting for help, take measures to cool the person right away by moving them to a cooler place if possible, applying cold water to large areas of the skin or clothing and fanning the person as much as possible. 
So ultimately, it's really important that people should continue to follow the advice of local and provincial health authorities on how to protect themselves and others during this heat event and to understand what resources are available to help them keep cool in their particular area. Thank you. And now I'll uh, pass it on uh, to uh, uh, Jen again for the French presentation. Okay. Uh, bonjour à tous. Uh, je m'appelle Jennifer Smith et je suis météorologue nationale de sensibilisation aux alertes à environnement et changement climatique Canada. Aujourd'hui, je vais parler de la chaleur persistante de l'Est du Canada, commençant par le scénario météorologique général uh, diapositif uh, suivant, s'il vous plaît. Un à crête de haute pression centrée de l'est de l'Amérique du Nord est responsable de cette vague de chaleur. Cette crête prononcée et presque stationnaire est un phénomène météorologique qui piège l'air chaud. C'est la raison de la masse d'air exceptionnellement chaud et humide. Elle a commencé à affecter l'Ontario lundi et s'est répandue dans l'est du Québec jusqu'aux provinces atlantiques. On a déjà observé des températures très élevées de plus de 30 degrés et des valeurs d'humidex uh, supérieures à 40 et ces conditions devraient se poursuivre jusqu'à uh, jusqu ce, ce que ce crête uh, s'affaiblisse et s'éloigne. Donc, non seulement il fait chaud, mais il est incroyablement humide et ce qui le rend beaucoup le plus difficile à se refroidir. De plus, euh, les températures nocturnes restent très chaudes, et ce qui exacerbe l'événement de chaleur parce que le soulagement est limité euh, la nuit. Encore une fois, les gens ne sont pas à euh, une mesure euh, de se rafraîchir euh, pendant une période, période prolongée. Bonne nouvelle, euh, les températures supérieures à la normale devraient s'atténuer vendredi, à l'exception de l'extrême sud de l'Ontario, où la chaleur et l'humidité supérieure à la normale persisteront euh, jusqu'en fin de journée dimanche. Mais d'ici là, il fera chaud et humide pendant quelques jours euh, dans l'Est du Canada. Examinons l'importance de cet événement euh, et ses répercussions à euh, prochain diapo, s'il vous plaît. Une telle vague de chaleur a rarement été observée si tôt en juin. Elle est semblable aux pires vagues de chaleur de juillet et août. Euh, du point de vue météorologique, il, il s'agit d'une crête importante, mais euh, sur les impacts qui ne sera pas euh, connu euh, que lorsque l'événement sera terminé. L'effet de la chaleur sur la société est souvent cumulatif. La température sera la plus anormalement élevée aujourd'hui et demain, mercredi et jeudi, particulièrement dans le sud-est de l'Ontario et le sud du Québec et l'ouest de Nouveau-Brunswick. Il est possible que les records soient battus. Par exemple, les prévisions actuelles pour Montréal à 134 degrés et le record historique de juin est de 35 degrés en 1964. De plus, en, en une entièrement de trois jours avec un maximum de 32 degrés avant le 20 juin n'a été observé euh, que deux fois depuis euh, 1875 à Montréal en 1978 et 1919. Entre-temps, à Toronto, la plus longue période d'humidex égale ou supérieure à 40 était euh, de 10 jours et à la fin d'août euh, 1960, euh, désolé, euh, 1953. Certains euh, records euh, quotidiennes ont été battus hier pour la température maximale euh, la plus élevée ainsi que la température minimale la plus élevée en Ontario et au Québec. La chaleur accablante peut affecter la santé de tout le monde. Nous devons prendre soin les uns des autres et en particulier de nos populations vulnérables. 
Environnement et changement climatique Canada émis des avertissements de chaleur qui contiennent des messages sur la santé élaborés en collaboration avec Santé Canada. Ces avertissements ont été émis avant cet événement de chaleur et les météorologues d'Environnement et changement climatique Canada continuent de surveiller les conditions météorologiques 24 heures sur 24, 7 jours sur 7 et de mettre à jour ces avertissements à mesure que la situation évolue. Uh, diapositive si vous, uh, suivante, s'il vous plaît. Il s'agit d'une vague de chaleur humide. L'abondance de l'humidité rend l'environnement atmosphérique propice au développement d'orages. De plus, ici au Canada, nous sommes sur le bordure nord de la crête où les orages se forment souvent. Il est donc fortement recommandé de surveiller les alertes et de rester informé des derniers veilles et alertes. Un simple rappel que les, les veilles annoncent les conditions météorologiques propices à des orages, alors qu'une alerte est un message urgent indiquant la présence de temps violent et qu'il faut prendre les mesures appropriées. Uh, diapo uh, suivante. Okay. Pour accéder aux renseignements météorologiques, les alertes ou avertissements, les veilles et les avis, veuillez uh, télécharger l'application MétéoCan. Uh, Visitez-nous sur uh, notre site web uh, canada.ca. Suivez-nous sur les réseaux sociaux. Téléphonez à Bonjour Météo ou sintonisez votre uh, radio uh, météo. Je vais maintenant céder la parole à mes collègues de Santé Canada qui parleront des répercussions de cette période de chaleur sur la santé et leurs recommandations pour assurer à la sécurité. Merci. Merci, Jennifer. Bonjour, je m'appelle Eric Lavigne de Santé Canada. L'épisode actuel de chaleur et cadence qui touche plusieurs personnes dans le centre et l'est du Canada peut présenter de graves risques pour la santé. La chaleur extrême peut affecter tout le monde. Cependant, les personnes âgées, les nourrissons, les jeunes enfants, les personnes atteintes de maladies chroniques sont plus à risque, comme les gens qui souffrent, par exemple, de diabète, qui vivent avec une maladie mentale ou ceux qui souffrent de maladies cardiovasculaires ou pulmonaires. Les personnes en situation d'itinérance et les personnes qui travaillent ou qui font de l'exercice à l'extérieur sont aussi plus à risque lors de périodes de chaleur accablante. Être préparé à la chaleur, être capable d'identifier les symptômes des maladies liées à la chaleur et s'avère Quoi faire pour se rafraîchir sur des mesures essentielles que tous les gens au Canada devraient prendre pour se protéger et protéger leurs proches. Il est important de reconnaître les signes et les maladies liées à la chaleur, comme les étourdissements et l'évanouissement, les nausées, les maux de tête, une respiration et un rythme cardiaque inhabituellement rapide ou la soif extrême. Si vous ressentez l'un de ces symptômes en cas de chaleur extrême, déplacez-vous vers un endroit frais et buvez immédiatement des liquides, l'eau étant la meilleure option. Les maladies liées à la chaleur sont principalement causées par une surexposition à une chaleur extrême ou à un surmenage. Ces maladies comprennent l'épuisement dû à la chaleur, les évanouissements liés à la chaleur, l'édème dû à la chaleur, c'est-à-dire le gonflement des mains, des pieds, des chevilles, les éruptions cutanées et les crampes causées par la chaleur. Elles peuvent entraîner des problèmes de santé à long terme ainsi que la mort. Il y a trois actions clés que vous pouvez faire lors des épisodes de chaleur accablante. Soyez informés. Tenez-vous au courant des prévisions et des alertes météorologiques locales et prévoyez des visites régulières et fréquentes des membres de votre famille, de vos voisins ou de vos amis au cas où ils auraient besoin d'aide. Hydratez-vous, buvez beaucoup de liquide, surtout de l'eau, avant d'avoir soif. Restez au frais. Le moyen le plus efficace de se protéger contre la chaleur extrême lorsque vous êtes à l'intérieur est de rester hydraté, d'utiliser la climatisation de bloquer le soleil en fermant les auvents, les rideaux ou les stores pendant la journée, d'utiliser des ventilateurs, de prendre des douches ou des bains frais, de préparer des repas qui n'ont pas besoin d'être cuits au four ou de passer du temps dans un endroit frais comme un centre communautaire ou une bibliothèque. Souvenez-vous de ne jamais laisser les personnes ou les animaux dont vous avez la garde à l'intérieur d'un véhicule stationné pendant l'été. Le coup de chaleur est une urgence médicale. Si vous remarquez une personne qui éprouve une perte de conscience totale ou partielle, une confusion, une température corporelle élevée ou une qui ne transpire plus, composez immédiatement le 911 ou votre numéro d'urgence locale. En attendant les secours, prenez des mesures immédiates pour rafraîchir la personne en la déplaçant si possible vers un endroit plus frais, 
en appliquant de l'eau froide sur de grandes zones de la peau ou des vêtements en évitant la personne autant que possible. Les gens devraient continuer de suivre les conseils des autorités sanitaires locales et provinciales sur la façon de se protéger et de protéger les autres pendant cet épisode de chaleur afin de savoir quelles ressources sont disponibles pour les aider à rester au frais dans leur région. Merci. Uh, merci beaucoup. Thank you, Jennifer, Peter, and Eric. Please note that the bilingual question period will be led by our three presenters and that we will also be joined by Nathan Gillett, research scientist at ECCC, for questions regarding climate change. Il est noté que la période de questions bilingues sera menée par nos trois présentateurs et que Nathan Gillett, chercheur scientifique à SECC, se joindra à nous pour, nous, pour les, que les questions relatives au changement climatique. To ask your question via Zoom, please use the hand raising function or by phone, please press star nine. To be called upon, we ask that you make sure your name and your media outlets are clearly identified in your Zoom name. Veuillez utiliser la fonction Levez la main si vous avez une question ou sur votre téléphone, veuillez appuyer étoile 9 suivi par étoile 6 pour établir le son. Pour poser une question, nous vous demandons de vous assurer que votre nom et votre média soient clairement identifiés dans votre nom Zoom. So our first question is from Benjamin Shingler, CBC News. Hi, hey. thanks for taking my call. Uh, um, my question. Um, I had a question just about this sort of dynamic, uh, if, or if someone can explain um, the, the heat dome, the heat taking place in the eastern part of the country, and at the same time we're seeing some some quite cold weather in parts of the west. Um, I was wondering if if we could have an explanation of how that works and why that's how that's connected. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, great question. Um, oftentimes when you see a really pronounced ridge of high pressure on the East Coast, like we're seeing right now, there's a complementary uh, deep trough of low pressure on the West. And so as a result, we're seeing um, some much cooler temperatures being observed. I know some records have actually been uh, been broken across um, parts of Saskatchewan and Alberta. Um, last I checked uh, this morning. Um, so it's, it's really just, it's a very... Um, um, high amplitude wave that's passing through the area. And, uh, and so as a result, we have very dichotomous weather from, from one side of the country to the other. So is it, just a follow up, is it fair to say then like the cold on the West is, is partly contributing to the, the sort of the heat that's stuck over the East? Not contributing to, um, but it is, um, it's just a result of it being a very, um, high amplitude trough ridge pattern that is moving across North America right now. And where you have a ridge of high pressure underneath, you have warmer temperatures and where you're underneath a, a low pressure system, it's where you experience uh, cooler temperatures. These patterns of trough ridges move across the country all the time. Just sometimes the amplitude of the trough and ridge is not as pronounced as what we're seeing this week. Um, so the extremes are are see, are being presented this week with with much colder weather over the west and much warmer over the east. La prochaine question provient de Diane Tremblay, le Journal de Québec. Oui, bonjour. Euh, J'aimerais poser une question à Madame Smith. Euh, pour la région de Québec, est-ce que vous êtes en mesure de me dire s'il y a des records de chaleur qui ont été battus là, depuis le début de la canicule? Uh, oui, on avait eu des records uh, battus à Québec, um, mais on va savoir plus à la fin de l'événement. Um, J'ai uh, quelques notes uh, de, de choses spécifiques um, uh, partout au Québec. Um, on avait eu des, uh, des températures... à uh, um, Ouais, euh, les températures nocturnes euh, sont, euh, sont intéressantes euh, à Québec. Euh, désolé, j'ai trouvé mes, euh, mes notes avec les, les choses spécifiques. C'est difficile de dire des, des petites euh, 
donné euh, en temps réel, mais euh, à Québec, à, ouais, à Barrage, à Témiscamingue, on avait eu des températures de 34 euh, le 17 juin. Euh, et aussi, quelque chose euh, qu'on a noté, c'est à Québec... Euh, um, Uh, on a, oh, désolé, uh, à Montreal, McTavish, on avait eu des, uh, des températures uh, nocturnes uh, de 22 degrés. Uh, C'est très haut pour, uh, pour uh, le mois de juin. Um, et ça, c'est les, les données que j'ai maintenant, mais on va avoir plus à la fin de, de l'événement. Désolé pour, pour uh, pas être plus, pr plus précis à ce moment. Désolé. <rire> Une sous-question. Euh, euh, au niveau des records de température, là, pour les trois provinces qui sont concernées par l'épisode de chaleur extrême que nous connaissons actuellement, est-ce que vous êtes en mesure de dire combien de records de chaleur vont être établis là, un peu partout? Est-ce que ça se calcule en dizaines, en centaines? Je ne sais pas. Est-ce qu'il y en a beaucoup? là Uh, c'est une bonne question. Uh, c'est un événement uh, avec beaucoup de facteurs. Ce n'est pas simplement uh, la chaleur. Um, c'est Ça fait une partie de l'histoire. On avait eu des, des records um, quotidiennes um, qui est proche de le record, um, um, mais 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 pas eu le, le record pour la uh, pour quelques régions. C'est proche pour beaucoup. On, on, en plus, on avait eu beaucoup d'humidité avec cet événement, donc c'est unique um, d'avoir beaucoup de chaleur comme ça, mais aussi beaucoup d'humidité en même temps. Et quand on a beaucoup d'humidité, uh, c'est um, plus difficile pour l'atmosphère d'être plus haut avec des extrêmes qu'on a uh, qu vu uh, aux prairies, par exemple. Um, donc, peut-être on, on va avoir quelques... Um, record euh, partout, euh, mais euh, c'était un événement très unique. Euh, on... ah, désolé, je n'ai pas <rire> plus de choses précises à dire. Désolé. <rire> Our next question is from Natalia Goodwin, CBC Ottawa. Hi. Hi there. Um, my question is um, about climate change. Uh, versus weather in terms of what's happening here uh, in eastern Canada. So obviously we get hot summers um, in the Ottawa area, but could you speak to, you were mentioning that, you know, this is the, one of the first times this has happened as early in June. Can you speak to if this is sort of the new reality or the new reality that you're expecting that these heat troughs will be happening earlier? That's a great question. I know there's a lot of scientific research being worked on um, to look at these types of things, but I'm going to defer to Nathan to see if he has any thoughts on uh, on any work that he's been doing. Uh, yes, uh, thanks for the question. Um, well, we know, of course, that Canada is warming. It's warming in summer uh, everywhere in terms of the observed trend. Um, we also know that the hot extremes are warming across Canada. Um, so the, the trend is very clear. Um, that of course, that warming of course is going to um, is going to lead to a longer period where we where the temperatures exceed certain thresholds. Um, so, yeah, just the general warming is going to you know mean that there is more um, exceedances of thresholds in the you know the, the beginning and the end of the season. Um, yeah, I, I so so I would say that. The, The influence of climate change on warming is clear. Of course, we do get variability in climate and weather all the time. You know, there, there have been this kind of event has happened before, um, but we do expect that the odds or the probability of this kind of event is increasing because of climate change. Um, and that is something that we're, we're doing research on. Um, but yeah, we don't have specific results for this event yet. Do you have a follow-up, Natalia? Um, no, I don't. That's okay. I think I'm good. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, so our next question is from Jordan Olmsted, the Canadian Press. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, I believe this one's probably for Nathan as well. Wondering if you could give us an update on the status of the uh, rapid attribution research that I know you folks are working on or other folks in uh, ECCC. Uh, yes, thanks for the question. 
Um, so yes, we do have a uh, prototype rapid event attribution system for heat waves. Um, there is, well, as uh, similar to what Jennifer said, we want to wait till the event has finished until we can, um, you know, um, analyze the event in its entirety. There is also some delay in um, getting the data uh, for the event to characterize it, um, but we uh, we can do the analysis once the event has finished in about seven days. Um, so we're monitoring this event um, and we will be carrying out the analysis once the event has finished um, and we should have uh, event attribution results for this event. Uh, we're aiming to have event attribution results for this event by the end of next week. Um, a quick follow-up if I can. Um, can you speak to the importance of, of this kind of attribution? And from what I understand, and maybe you can confirm, uh, ECCC is the first national agency to do this kind of rapid attribution? Um, yeah, thanks for the question. So um, understanding climate change impacts on hot extremes um, is useful to help plan for adaptation. Um, it's, it's helpful to know if this event was made more likely by human-induced climate change. Um, and how much more likely it was it was made, and that can help us plan for future such events, help us um, understand how these events are changing and how we can expect them to change in the future. Um, I, I, I can't give you a definitive answer to the second question. I know there are other agencies around the world that are working on uh, rapid event attribution. Um, yeah, as, as I said already, you know, we do have this prototype system in place now, um, and we're doing uh, research to develop that system, uh, apply it to cold extremes, apply it to precipitation extremes in the future. Thanks. Our next question is from Kelsey McEwen, CTV Your Morning. Hi there. I was wondering if you could uh, let us know how many records have been set in the six provinces that are under heat warnings today, if there are records in all six, and where we could find that information. That's a great question. Um, the data is in so far for, uh, for everything up to yesterday. Day. And um, let me see if I can, uh, I guess I can forward the link to maybe Nicole, you can pass it along as part of the presentation deck, maybe yeah, um, as a link. After. Okay. Um, but there is a, uh, a climate website that you can go to, to look at all of the climate normals. I'm just pulling it up here so that I can uh, refer to it um, properly, but uh, it's the, uh, under the historical climate data, so if you go on the Environment and Climate Change Canada web page and, uh, and search for, for climate information, you'll see there's a link for all of the historical data and climate normals, and in there you'll be able to find all of the records um, that have occurred recently and um, uh, for any future use. Okay, thank you. And my follow-up is you mentioned that there were notable records set in the daytime highs, but also those overnight minimums. Uh, can you talk specifically about the number in Montreal and if there are other areas that are seeing that overnight minimum record and what that would be? Oh, sure. Um, I don't know that I have the Montreal record on my fingertips, um, but I know that their overnight low was around 21.7, I think. Um, and it's it, it beats the record by a little bit, but most of Southern Quebec saw overnight lows around the, the 21 or so degree mark, um, which is um, pretty warm for for June. Um, and that's what makes it significant um, because it's uh, it's very hard to cool off when you don't have um, when the temperature can't drop and the humidity is very high. Um, so that's what makes it significant is, uh, is just the inability to cool off at night. Our next question is from Carrie Slack, APTN News. Can you hear me? Uh, my question is directed, I think, more towards Peter Berry on the health end of things. Um, I know here in Ontario, we have approximately 20 communities who are still under boil, uh, Indigenous communities that are still under boil water advisories. And a lot of your, um, I want to say, solutions re um, involve drinking water or taking a bath or a shower. Um, what can you suggest 
for these communities? Because for the most part, a lot of them don't have super health services either. Um, what can you suggest for these communities to help them deal with this? Yeah, thanks for the, the question. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I think a, a key recommendation for, for people is to take a wide uh, range of uh, activities to, to really uh, cool themselves uh, in their homes, but also uh, when they're going out. And uh, that certainly is a, a challenge, I think, in terms of um, um, uh, if uh, there's less access to, um, to, to drinking water. Um, but, uh, but certainly um, uh, following uh, the, the, the local um, uh, and provincial and territorial uh, uh, advice that uh, is out there, uh, because there, there uh, may be resources um, available and becoming available as the uh, heat event um, increases, uh, in terms of uh, cooling opportunities um, uh, in communities uh, where people can, um, you know, uh, be in cooling centers or perhaps I know some uh, communities are opening, um, you know, maybe splash pads or pools and things like that um, and uh, providing other uh, other types of assistance. So it's uh, really important to stay aware of um, in your local area uh, what some of the um, recommendations are uh, for for staying um, uh, staying safe in in the heat. Thank you so much. Sorry, do you have a follow up? Nope, that's great. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, donc notre prochaine question provient de Marie Lou L. Est-ce que vous pouvez clarifier votre média, s'il vous plaît? Uh... Hello, can you hear me? Oh. No. Oui. Bonjour. Est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui. OK. Alors, je travaille pour Radio-Canada dans la région d'Ottawa-Gatineau. Euh, ma question serait pour euh, Jennifer. Euh, vous avez mentionné là, que c'était euh, un événement euh, assez rare à cette période-ci de l'année. On a déjà à Ottawa eu une vague de chaleur de sept jours en juin 2020. Alors, en quoi celle-ci, elle est plus rare? Parce que là, on parle seulement de quatre jours. Oui, on avait eu un événement en 2020 et aussi un autre en 2018, euh, je pense. Mm -hmm. um, oui. On avait eu des, des vagues de chaleur um, pendant de cette période. Oui, um, ouais, uh, ces, um, ces événements, uh, je pense que l'un de, de uh, 2018, c'était proche de... Um, uh, le 1er juillet, mm -hmm. um, et l'autre est plus tard en juin. On, on, quand je dis un événement rare en juin, c'est un, un rare um, tôt en juin. Um, avant, uh, uh, le 20 juin, c'est une date on, on décidé pour évaluer uh, <rire> pour cet événement, mais c'est rare pour le... le um, pour le milieu de juin, d'avoir des températures euh, hautes comme ça, avec humidité haute euh, comme ça, et pour une longue période. Mais on a des similarités, oui, on avait eu des, des, des vagues de chaleur, mais ils ont euh, plus commun euh, en juillet et, euh, et en août. Et c'est pour, pour cette raison euh, que j'ai noté que cet okay. événement est rare en, en juin. OK. Non, mais je me demandais en quoi il était aussi rare. Est-ce que c'est simplement la chaleur, l'humidité ou il y a autre chose qui font en sorte que, euh, autre chose dans l'événement qui euh, spécifiquement le rend euh, plus exceptionnel, si on veut? Euh, non, c'est comme euh, c'est comme toujours avec les vagues de chaleur. C'est la longueur, c'est la, la hauteur de la, la chaleur, euh, c'est euh, l'humidité. Euh, pour cet événement, l'humidité était euh, un, un gros facteur euh, et on, on voit, euh, on a vu des, des, des nuits euh, euh, chaudes. C'était euh, euh, donc ça. Ça donne une, une longue période euh, avec euh, moins de, de périodes de, de réf, euh, rafraîchissement <rire> pour les, les hommes, euh, pour les personnes. Euh, désolé et euh, et ouais euh, non c'est 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 pas normal pour cette partie de juin mais c'est normal pour une vague de chaleur. Um, um, Ouais. Puis, je sais que vous avez fait une conférence de presse aussi là, ben, euh, 
en tout cas Environnement Canada, la semaine dernière ou l'autre d'avant, je me rappelle plus. Et mmh. puis, vous avez mentionné que l'été serait au-delà des normales de saison. Alors, est-ce qu'on peut s'attendre à ce que des événements comme cette semaine se répètent régulièrement dans l'été? Est-ce que vous avez des prévisions par rapport à ça? Je sais que c'est pas évident de prévoir très à l'avance. Mais... Oui, ce n'est pas, euh, ce n'est pas euh, possible de prévoir plus de cinq jours à peu près en avance. Donc, euh, un événement comme ça, euh, une vague de chaleur, c'est un événement météo- météorologique. Euh, donc, on peut pas... Euh, on n'est pas capable de, de donner des prévisions euh, à long terme pour des choses comme ça, euh, mais si on, on fait faire une addition de tous les événements pendant l'été, ça donne nos, notre uh, climatologie pour l'été. Donc, euh, on verra. Euh, ça, c'est, c'est la météo. <rire> Our next question is from Marlo Glass, Ottawa Citizen. Hello. My question is specific to Ottawa and the National Capital Region. Um, I, I believe that maybe this might be answered by that link um, that was mentioned earlier. I'm just wondering if this region is close to hitting or breaking um, previously set temperature records, um, mm-hmm. either earlier this week or later on in this week. Um, it'll be it'll be something that we're monitoring. It's it's definitely we're definitely close. Uh, we have um, I think a forecast high for. Um, For Ottawa today, that is, uh, let's see, what do we have? Uh, it's currently 32. We have a high of 34 uh, forecast. So um, generally for the Ottawa-Montreal area, I'd have to look into detail at the exact records, but generally uh, around uh, temperatures of around 35 are, are the max temperature that we've we've seen. So that's the record for the region. A lot of them are going to be very close. Uh, I don't know if we'll break the record, but we will be very close to it. Thank you. Yeah. Our next question is from Kayla Hounsel, CBC. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I am a reporter for The National on CBC Television, which means that your presentation at the beginning is uh, of no use to me because I could not see you, but I think it's really valuable. And so I'm wondering if you would mind just summarizing for me why this is so significant and why people really need to be paying attention to it. Jennifer, you were talking about it being really muggy, not just hot, nighttime temps, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's very early in June. So if you could just address why is this so significant and um, important for people to be paying attention to. Okay, that's a great question. Um, yes, um, this heat event is not only a long duration event, it's a multi-day event, but we're also seeing temperatures that are very close to record-breaking temperatures, even if they don't necessarily break the threshold and um, and and have a record occur for any particular uh, location, we are very close to that threshold. So it is quite warm. Uh, The other thing that we're seeing is a lot of humidity, a lot of moisture with this situation. So it's kind of feels like Florida outside. It's very, very warm. It's very, very muggy. And for this region, that makes it very uncomfortable for people. And the third thing that makes it very tricky is the fact that there is no reprieve at night. All that moisture uh, during the day makes it hard for the temperature to drop off at night and we and to see any, any real reprieve. Um, and so it's making uh, the event uh, longer duration given that it's not just hot during the day, it's also continuing to be hot through the night. So there's no real reprieve for folks until the Uh, the ridge moves out and the, and the temperatures start to drop. And do you have a follow-up? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm not sure who wants to address this, but how dangerous is this? I'm going to defer to maybe Peter to speak from a health aspect. Sure. Um, well, uh, I mean, this is this is quite dangerous because uh, we, we know... Uh, that these types of events uh, can have very severe impacts on on health, uh, uh, illness, uh, and and death. I mean, uh, we've we've seen uh, events uh, in the past where hundreds of people have have died uh, from this. Uh, you'll recall the uh, uh, heat event in in BC in, in 2021 uh, uh, that uh, were 619 people. Uh, their deaths were, were linked to that uh, that event. 
Uh, we, we also know that uh, there are particular people in the population that are significantly higher risk. Uh, you know, older adults, uh, young children, um, people with chronic diseases, uh, people uh, without uh, homes, uh, people on low income. Uh, and these people um, uh, really um, uh, can be impacted quite severely uh, by, uh, by this. Um, and, um, uh, you know, some interesting uh, recent findings uh, from some of the events that we've had uh, in Canada, and even internationally, uh, that, you know, people with mental illnesses can be uh, quite severely affected by uh, by these events, uh, and they can this can happen uh, very quickly. So it's really important uh, to be prepared, uh, and it's really important to stay aware of um, the the alerts uh, and um, and to take a preventative and, and uh, proactive measures in terms of cooling yourself. Uh, very very important. Our next question is from Anand Ramakrishnan. Can you please confirm your media outlet before asking your question? Hi, uh, sorry, it doesn't say, but I'm CBC as well. Thank you uh, for taking my question. Um, my question also, I suppose, for either Jennifer or um, Peter, uh, it, it, you called the effects uh, cumulative. Um, and picking up on that last point about how dangerous this is, I'm thinking about Statistics Canada today releasing some uh, data on uh, heat deaths and excess mortality, essentially, from these events. Um, what are we to expect if, if, if it's happening so early uh, in the season? Um, what did you mean by it, its cumulative health effects? Just uh, usually with a heat event, I, I'll let Peter mostly answer this one, but um, usually um, the effects take time to uh, to affect people. It takes a little while for people to adjust, and the longer the duration of the event, um, the greater the chance that more people will be affected by the conditions. But I'll let Peter um, give the answer to this one. Yeah, thank, thanks, Jen. Um, uh, I mean... It is cumulative in the sense that um, there there is this lag effect uh, for heat, and and heat is one of the issues that we actually know most about in terms of some of the health impacts uh, with respect to uh, other types of uh, uh, hazards, and um, and so that's why it's, it's again it's really important for people to be monitoring uh, their um, uh, their health status, uh, uh, and again these people with chronic uh, illnesses, you know, people with cardiovascular disease, people with respiratory disease. Uh, people with uh, mental mental illness, for example, um, because uh, this this can extend in terms of some of these uh, these effects uh, over a few days, um, and then when you have a long duration uh, event like this, that's very very intense. Um, you can actually see, again, very severe uh, health outcomes. Uh, the, the other thing from the health perspective, why this is really quite important, uh, Health Canada released a, um, a national climate change and health assessment uh, a couple of years ago uh, that actually has a chapter on uh, um, health impacts of natural hazards related to climate change. And, um, you know, this is, uh, it, it really showed how there, there are different kinds of uh, hazards that can, uh, that, uh, that can affect health. And that's where you you also see this type of accumulative effect um, in terms of uh, uh, heat perhaps uh, happening with other events as well, uh, which health authorities uh, need to plan for and individuals need to plan for too. And just to pick up on that as a follow-up, do you think uh, when it comes to planning like this, I mean, we have wildfire emergency preparedness, we have flood emergency preparedness, what are we doing about the heat? Do we think we need to take it more seriously? Well, I, I think, uh, I mean, Health Canada is uh, we're working with our colleagues in Environment Climate Change Canada, uh, but we've also been, um, uh, since 2008, uh, we've had a heat health program that uh, has been really working to expand heat alert response systems uh, to uh, communities across Canada to work with uh, uh, local and regional health authorities. Um, so we've developed um, a guidance about how to do that, uh, you know, best practices for developing these systems. These are the systems that uh, health authorities use to alert the public, to communicate to the public with the messages that I presented uh, earlier, but also to work with partners uh, in their community on response plans, uh, on opening cooling centers, the, the kinds of things that we're, we're seeing uh, in, this, uh, in this heat event. 
but also really quite importantly, how to evaluate whether or not your system is actually effective. And so as we get more severe events in the future, that's going to be really, really important because uh, they, they, you know, they need to be effective. So there are ways that, uh, that these can be uh, evaluated uh, uh, moving forward. Uh, and so we've, we've um, you know, undertaken uh, developing some of this guidance, um, but also we have a, a community of practice. So we're linking a lot of uh, uh, health partners uh, with the, the newest science, uh, for example, from our uh, national health assessment that can help them plan and where they need to make course corrections in terms of some of the uh, some of the measures um, based on their local circumstances, the things that they're seeing, uh, they can do that with this uh, with this new new science. Our next question is from Kate Allen, Toronto Star. Hi, uh, my first question is for Jennifer. Um, is this heat dome sitting over Eastern Canada the same as the one that was over the Southwest US and Mexico? Did the ridge just move? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yes, it for the most part did just move, which weather systems usually do. Um, we sort of, um, we have a pattern that fluctuates and it moves across North America. Uh, so I'd have to look into it to see if this was the exact ridge that originated from, from the Southwest uh, United States, but um, it may have just been a ridge that developed um, across uh, across Canada. I can dive into that um, very quickly and uh, and let you know. But um, the um, it is a very good question because it is all all related. Um, so yes, um, it's a, it's the same pattern. yeah. So just a quick cursory look into history, uh, but yes, uh, <laughs> um, yes, it's a it's the same same ridge, same pattern. Um, it's just shifting east, and this particular one was building north, and it affected uh, Canada, uh, but majority of the uh, the northeast U.S. as well. So um, very normal for weather patterns. This trough ridge pattern um, goes around the globe, and uh, and this is why we get our weather patterns. Perfect. Thanks. Um, yep. And my second question is for either Peter or Eric. Um, are heat events like this that happen earlier in the year potentially more dangerous because people are less acclimatized to heat? Um, like I know that workers, for example, um, that acclimatization is part of like the, the risk calculus. Um, so I'm just wondering if it, yeah, a heat event in June could be riskier because people haven't really built up that tolerance um, that they do over the summer. Yeah, I, I can start off and see if uh, Eric might want to add anything. But yes, they are more dangerous uh, early on, and that's why we're you know quite concerned about this this one. It's an it's an early event, uh, and people um, they're physio physiologically they're they're not uh, acclimatized, and this can actually affect certain populations uh, more than others. So. Um, you know, older older adults or uh, uh, you know seniors uh, may have more difficulty uh, acclimatizing, um, and so they're more susceptible to heat illness and to uh, to heat death. And you know, I think some people, um, when it happens early, can catch people by surprise, perhaps with some of the behaviors. Um, they're they're not you know you're not back into the the mode of uh, preparing uh, for uh, when when heat uh, events occur, and um, you know staying hydrated. Uh, when you go outside, uh, you know, staying in cool places in shaded areas, um, and so I think uh, I think when something happens like this, it's uh, so quick and so intense, um, it, it can be a problem for it for that reason. But perhaps I can see if Eric has uh, like to add to that. Absolutely agree with uh, what you mentioned, Peter, and thanks, Kate, for the question. I think in addition, um, we know that individuals who are already frail and maybe those that are undergoing cancer treatments, people who have uh, affected the immune system, um, that maybe some of those people would have uh, passed away maybe in a few months or a year from now. But the uh, these extreme heat events will sometimes um, uh, be associated with premature mortality. So people might actually suffer uh, from these first heat events in, in, in the beginning of the summer, uh, because of their 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 frail uh, capacity to to respond to the uh, the heat event. Our next question is from Janice Ramsey. Would it be possible to clarify your media outlet, please? Yes, hi. I'm with Metroland Media. 
You can hear me okay? Um, yeah. yeah, okay. The question I'm looking for, I, again, I'm interested in the heat records as well, uh, but I'm wondering if you keep track of the Humidex records. Uh, have we broken any of those? That's a very good question. I like it. Um, we do keep track of humidity as well. Um, just looking at some of the information that I have, we take note of, of Humidex values and we take note of the duration of Humidex uh, events as well as uh, as well as temperature. Um, and uh, I'd have to check to see if that's available online or if that's something that you might have to phone in for. Um, but uh, for instance, uh, there was a long streak of Humidex in, in Ottawa, for instance, there was uh, four days um, back in 2021 uh, with a humidex value of, of 42 um, and uh, and this was the only streak to ever occur in the month of June for instance um, so we do keep those kinds of records and keep uh, track of what the max humidex was in this case the humidex value was was 44 for for that particular event so we do have that type of event statistics um, I'd have to look to see how if it's available in the same way as the the temperature and precipitation data is uh, and if it is it should be available online and uh, unavailable for your perusing and, and usage. Um. Okay, thank you. That's it. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go back to Marlo from the Ottawa Citizen. I think I may have forgotten her follow-up. So Marlo, if you have one more question. I didn't have a follow-up, but thank you so much. Okay, perfect. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, so our next question is from Chris Campbell. Would it be possible to clarify your outlet before asking your question? Thank you. I'm with CTV Windsor. Um, and my question uh, is just, I, I'm of the impression this seems to be a dress rehearsal, setting the stage with, you know, summer and the dog days of summer, I should say, still a ways out. Uh, um, are we worried that things could get worse? Um uh, the temperatures could be even more extreme than this once we actually do get into the official summer months? That is a hard question to answer, but I, it is a good question to ask. Um, the, uh, Summer heat events are, are weather events, right? And so our ability to forecast these events with much advance notice is very limited. Um, we're looking maybe five to seven days into the future to be able to predict uh, the events themselves um, as to whether or not they will be uh, more significant events or hotter events or longer duration events. It's honestly something that we just don't have the answer to uh, for an event specific um, question throughout the summer. All we can say is that any modeling that we've done is showing that over the course of the summer, when you add up all of the events that occur, the cool ones, the warm ones, uh, the net result is going to be uh, likely to be a, a warmer summer overall. So I wish I had more to offer you, but the science just isn't there to offer that level of precision and forecasting yet. Um, maybe Nathan can speak to the, the climate aspect to how that's maybe changing over time. But from a weather perspective, I, I wish I could look that uh, easily into the future and be able to tell you, but I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, thanks, Jennifer. Um, yes, as Jennifer said, the, the seasonal forecast is for warmer than average conditions over the whole summer. Um, I think there is work going on to, to see how uh, that translates into, you know, an increased risk of, of hot extremes. Uh, as Jennifer said, I don't think we have those statistics to present to you right now. Um, obviously, in general, you know, we would expect an increased risk of hot extremes if the summer is projected to be warmer than average, but, but we don't have the specifics at this stage. Thanks. And do you have a follow-up? I'm okay, thank you. Perfect. Uh, so if you would like a PDF copy of the PowerPoint presentation, please send an email to media at ec.gc.ca. Si vous souhaitez obtenir une copie PDF de la présentation PowerPoint, veuillez envoyer un courriel à media à commercial sc.gc.ca. This concludes today's media availability. Thank you. C'est ce qui conclut la conférence de presse d'aujourd'hui. Merci beaucoup.